Hello, I'm Oscar, and I'm here today with uh, Ubu Mosquita at a marine uh, factory in uh, Mosel. Hugo, the question of the day is what is TCA and how does it change your uh, wine experience? TCA is a, a chemical contamination uh, that can occur uh, from, in, in several stages uh, of, of materials that are produced are used during the production of wine or, or production of a spirits drink. Uh, well, in the end of the day, it's a chemical reaction between pentachlorophenols and chlorine, which combined in, different, in, the, in, the, in a certain quantity can react and create the TCA246 chloroanazole. So it has nothing to do with cork taste or cork taint, as people usually mistakenly call it, because actually cork has no taste. Cork should be inert, and cork should not change the organoleptic characteristics of the drink itself. So but the, usually there is this misconception uh, of calling cork taste to a contaminant of cork or a contaminant of any other wood product. So we can find TCA in, in the cork or in other uh, materials that we use to, to, to get the final, the final bottle. TCA, uh, as being a contaminant, can contaminate anything related to forest. Uh, for example, anything that might be in contact with earth. If earth is contaminated, you're going to get TCA. I can tell you that my last nasty experiences with TCA have been garlic, which I buy from the supermarket. Garlic. And it's full of TCA sometimes. I'm sure if you look for it, you're going to find it next time you cook. Um, <laughs> but you can also find TCA in wood. You can find TCA in paper. You can find TCA uh, in, in, in anything that's related to, to any, any wood or any forest product. Because it's a contamination. So. Of course, of course, being cork, a spongy material, it has the ability to absorb more of this contaminant. If it's present on atmosphere, uh, you can have a cross-contamination. Okay, so last question. Different consumers have different perceptions of TCA for certain levels. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Because so it depends, it depends on, the, um, on the experience that that consumer has about wine and TCA. But probably it's also a, a big part which is uh, uh, inept, comes with you. It, it depends on the sensory performance, uh, sorry, perception that you have uh, of TCA itself. Or of, of the question here is, you can divide it in two, whether the consumer can tell whether he's in presence of TCA or any other contaminant. Uh, because many people, for example, confuse retinomyces with TCA, which is a totally different contamination. Some people confuse TBA with TCA, and they have totally different oranges. Well, in the end of the day, the question is that it may make the consumer not buy this product anymore. So it's a major concern for the industry, and it's a major concern for us as consumers. So from the industrial point of view, or from the industry point of view, we have to do all the necessary work to guarantee that TCA is not present in our products. Uh, and that's what we, we thrive to. So we can find TCA in the cork, but we can, or, but we can also find probably in the... You can find it in the barrel. In the barrel. You can find it in a pallet. And in the, pallet. the question is, is if, it, if you check it on your winery, you need to look why. Why did it... Why, was, where, where does it come from? Does it come from my cork? Does it come from it's my, not necessarily from, from the cork. It come, yeah. There was a study recently published by Pascal Chautenay from Excel uh, Laboratory in Bordeaux which was uh, explaining the serious problem of TCA contamination in barrels, in barrels. which we didn't know up to not a, lo a very long, long time ago. So this is something that we are learning a lot, which yeah. is good. In the end of the day, you're going to get better products. Definitely. Thank you very much, Hugo. Welcome.